Hello and welcome to, uh, well, for me, a very special episode of the Fully Charged Show. I've come all the way to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We drove here in an electric car and I've come here for a very special reason. I'm going to be reunited with a very old buddy. My Nissan Leaf has been here for a long, long time. So that is Amsterdam. There's my Nissan Leaf and this is Fully Charged. <laughs> So, yeah, it's the 2011 Nissan Leaf. Fully Charged Live is back and bigger than ever. Get your tickets now to the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy live show, featuring all manner of electric vehicles, tons of test drives, live theatre sessions, interactive home energy experiences, and so much more. See you there. Now, just before I start this episode, I want to make a really important point, and it's, I'm doing it right at the top just to make sure that everyone who watches this video sees this bit. The reason that I went and, uh, to Amsterdam and had the battery changed in this car is really specific to this model and era of electric vehicle. I've had a lot of people coming up to me recently saying, oh, I don't want to get an electric car because I'll have to change the battery after two or three years. Still, people still saying that. That is what they're hearing. That is what they're being told in the press. That is not true. You will not have to change the battery in an electric car. This particular period of, of electric vehicles this is the very first mass-produced purely electric car ever built it was made in japan in 2010 11 years ago the technology has moved on so far in that time if you buy a second-hand electric car now you will not have to replace the battery and if in any circumstances the battery is replaced because of some other damage from a crash or whatever those battery cells are reused as you will see in this episode you don't throw a battery away. No one will ever throw a battery away. Just to make sure I underline in big block bold capitals, that is not going to happen. Just to put that ridiculous myth that has been spread to bed. But this particular car did have a new battery and that's what this episode is all about. So let's get on and explain what happened. So Annie, there it is. I can't believe it. It's your car, man. That's my car. <laughs> it still is. It still, still is. is. Uh, we ended up, I guess, doing it remotely. Do it, you were with remotely. us yeah. during the moment yeah. as we were holding her by her bits. So what we've done is that uh, the very first thing is, of course, you need to know what you're swapping it for. Yeah. Leaf has by now come out with several newer, better options for their Leafs. So what we found was a 40 kilowatt hour pack that fits perfectly into this car. Um, and it, uh, you know, uh, the car had a mishap. We believe, you know, the, the owner of that car is fine. It had a rollover, but everybody right. was able to walk away. The batteries basically barely know they're out of the factory, haven't worked yeah. as hard and are perfectly able to you know, spruce up your leaf, not just spruce up, actually they'll give your leaf more range than the original. So the other one we did recently, more or less same model year, same 40 kilowatt hour battery. It was saying, let me do kilometers to miles here, it was oh, yeah. saying 180 mile. Now, of course, that'll probably be in yeah. summer downhill, wind in your ass yeah. kind of thing, but you know, at least it's saying it. So yeah. yes. if you get 90 to 100 mile uh, on the highway in the winter, yeah. yeah, this car will go for another 10 years. The batteries in these cars were always yeah. compromised up to a, a, a amount without, with the heating and cooling sure. and all that stuff. Yeah. But also what we did to them was so bad. So we would drive literally 
four miles to the shop sure. and then come home and plug the damn thing in. It was at about 97% right. capacity. Yeah. And we'd plug it in and yeah. just go, no, that's... Although well, one could argue... Um, but you we know, didn't know that. You're really. using it. Yeah. The computer should have should known have, better, Should have right? coped, exactly. But this is, I mean, look, I mean, it's still it's an a, amazing car for yeah. that. You got this in 2011. 2011. It was ma made in 2010. I've checked. It was it built was in 2010. It was the one car for a theoretical affordable price yeah. that did what it could do. So the Leaf is still transformational for yeah, yeah. what we need it to be. So honey, I've got to ask you about the tractor because sure. I know replacing the battery and that I wouldn't be able to do it, but essentially that was a fairly straightforward procedure. Absolutely. What you've done here yeah, is something else entirely. That's, a, that's another Absolutely. step. This okay. would be another step. This is a monster. I mean, it's yeah. a big tractor anyway, but then you've... Sure. So it really is. There's no diesel engine. Nothing at all. So wow. this one is now 100% electric. Right. No hybrid, no diesel, nothing involved in that. Um, and you'll see, so we've over the years kind of moved from you know, our first cottage industry, which was like upgrading classics, yeah. making them electric, uh, you know, cutting our teeth, getting a team together, having the early adopters be able to ride electric. But all this time we wanted to move forward towards a, you know, market that would emerge yeah. for machines that have an actual job in town, yeah. you know, that are doing 10, 15,000 liters of diesel. This machine, however, the reason it exists is that there are now large construction sites in town right. where to get the permit for the construction, you have to show that the part of transporting debris over the road and transporting building materials over the road can actually happen emission free. Right. Now this tractor is a big tractor, but it will be pulling a cart that holds 30 tons of material. Wow. And there's just no normal other way with trucks or that kind of thing to br bring yeah. that kind of stuff to and from. Yeah. But you go to the manufacturer of the tractor, or John Deere or anybody, and you would say, hey, we want the tractor fully electric. And they're saying, hey, that, that road maps another five to 10 years. Right. Now, and that's where the, you know, uh, actually conversion comes into play. Right. And we've been able to pack 360 kilowatt hours. So that would be commensurate to, say, four Tesla Model S's. Yeah. Energetically are in there. Wow. And so that means hauling, hauling about 30 tons, this tractor can do eight full hours of work, right. have a full day. Wow. At night, be charging electrically, yeah. but during the day, be making sure that all that rubble and then all that building material for a couple of years gets to the site emission free. Right. So these are batteries that have had seven years of life as, wow. as traction batteries. Yeah. They'll have another 10 years of life as solar energy wow. buffer. But it's very, very impressive. Wow. And so how, what is the total capacity in here then? Now, okay, is this is 550 kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours, right. So half a megawatt hour. Half basically. a megawatt yeah. hour, basically. Wow. In the same size of container using the newest batteries, which are, you know, form factor right. smaller, we could get about 1.5 megawatt wow. hour. Wow. In the yeah. same size. In the hours. same size. Right. But right now, we did it this way. We knew the amount of batteries we had to work with. We've kept some extra that if some turn out to be weaker right. over their you cycle life, them you them can swap them out yeah. without the whole thing going down. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. design. I just want to say, because the one thing you can't get uh, visually is yeah. the smell, because it actually smells like, a bit like new trainers. Yes. It's like yes. very, very sort of yeah. cool new smell. It doesn't yeah. smell musty and all. It's really... So over the years, and I never knew this, but you start recognizing certain battery chemistries right. by the residual smell that hangs ah. around. Now, the specific battery that's in here, which is an iron phosphate battery, uh, we've always said um, it's reminiscent of peach schnapps. Yes, it's yes. quite sweet. Yes, yes, wow. there's that. Isn't that yeah. And that's because there is a little bit of a, like an alcohol-like combination right. in the wow. electrolyte. And I've over the years, like if I open a battery box that hasn't been open for a long time, you get a good whiff of it. It's like, oh, this one is peach, <laughs> peach. <laughs> and, and it, oh and that must be cow you know it's, that's a certain yeah. manufacturer that we work with a lot and you it's, just recognize the yeah. smell out of thousands yeah. it's so not what you expect when you're talking about high-end electronics <laughs> yeah. that's quite a nice that's a, i'd say that was a 2012 <laughs> yeah, peach <pretty> much. Good, <laughs> vintage. Yeah, good vintage <laughs> So that's it. We're setting off now. We're leaving Amsterdam now. It's, we're heading heading to the UK. Well, I'm going to see how far we can drive, and uh, we're going to stop and charge on the way. And uh, I'll, I'll see you there. I can't remember the wipers. There we go. I can see where I'm going now. It's so funny being back in this car because. <laughs> Regular viewers will know I drive and have driven a hugely wide range of electric vehicles now. Uh, but when I first had this car, I'd driven one other car, the Mitsubishi iMev. So I was blown away by the high level of technology available in this vehicle. And now I'm thinking this is like driving an antique. It's extraordinary. 
but such a cool antique. I love it. So there we go. Clean my windscreen. So, okay, started off 24 kilowatt hours, had it for, we'd driven it over 65,000 miles in that time. Uh, used it all the time. Really, really reliable car. Nothing ever, ever, ever went wrong with this car except the range wasn't that good. Everything else had been fine. It's had services, it's had new tyres, it's had new brake shoes on the front. That's it. Uh, so it's had one set of tyres and new brake shoes on the front in that 66,000 miles. The total amount of money I've spent servicing it is £212 in 11 years. And I made sure that I checked that properly. So it's really only had two services. And the thing is, when they service it, like at a, a Nissan dealership, they basically washed it put new washer fluid in the in the wipe for the wipers check no, they checked it I checked the safety of it checked the brakes checked the tires the steering all that stuff the lights made sure all of that was fine but that was basically it there's nothing else to do I paid four thousand pounds for the the battery and because uh, it's got a value you know you, you're not going to throw that away contrary to what people have said on many times you know, you're just going to throw the batteries away. Are you an idiot? You know, it's worth a lot of money. So it cost me £4,000 to replace the battery in this car, which again was a big commitment because, you know, four grand, it's a lot of money. But then you think of what I haven't spent on petrol, diesel, servicing, spare parts, exhausts in that 10-year uh, period. And you add it to the, the, the overall cost per mile of this car, which has been charged a huge amount of the uh, electricity I've used in this car. It comes from my solar panels, very specifically in this car. I've always managed to charge it right through this summer for the last 10 years on solar. It still works out. I reckon the average cost per mile is under one penny a mile to drive this car because it is just a very cheap and it's very energy efficient when you're driving it carefully. It doesn't use much electricity. It's been amazingly economic. I don't want to sell it, but I'll, I'll pass it on. I really want to keep keep track of it. But, you know, this car is going to last at least another 10 years with this battery, and it will do another 150 or 200,000 miles easily without any strain at all. And it will be very, very cheap to maintain and run it in that time and very cheap to fuel it. So I do not regret forking out four grand to pay for that battery. I mean, it's been a huge frustration. I haven't been able to go, get over here to, to pick the car up because it's just been... You know, we've not been allowed to travel on all the normal stuff. So we're now, I'm now driving from Amsterdam to a charger on the motorway just this side of the Belgian border in a place called Hazeldonk. And that charger is run by Fastned. So I just had a little bit of a panic attack then because I haven't used a Fastnet charger for a long time. I've got the app, I plugged it in, I checked on the app that it was the right one and I was just going, oh my God, it's not working. This is going to be a nightmare. And it went beep and it was, it was on already. I just hadn't noticed. Anyway, so we've only, I've only now driven about six, 70, 60, 70 miles since we set off. Um, the, uh, this is the, the crew car we've been using, the Hyundai Kona, which is a very kind loan to us from Hyundai. That's charging as well on Fastned. Uh, doesn't really need to because it's got much more range. So basically, if you look at those two cars, this one has got, this one has got realistically at highway speeds in the rain, in this weather, 250 plus miles easy. And if you're careful, getting onto 300. That now, which used to be 55, is now, Realistically, I think 110 to 115 miles, which is fantastically good. It's just not quite as good as that. And that's a new car. And you'll never replace the battery in that car. And I have replaced the battery in that car. There we go, that's it. So thank you to Fastnet for having chargers that work. That's a very important thing. Just a little note to some charge point operators in the UK. Chargers that work is a big plus.
it's been quite a long day. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm just charging the car now. I've got it back up to 69% at the moment. What is really confusing, and this is going to take a bit of getting used to, is the, the, the old version of the this car would have been charged by now. It's been charging for 29 minutes. When I got here, I was at about 12%. And so uh, it, it takes longer because it's a bigger battery. <laughs> so from Amsterdam to here is I have driven 261 miles so far. Uh, and I've charged twice in that time. And this is the third charge. Uh, but the first time was not for very long. That was about 15 minutes. It was just to make sure I could get to the next one. There was a charger I didn't trust which actually probably would have worked uh, the chargers in Belgium have got a lot better um, so I drove from uh, Ghent was I outside Ghent yes I was outside Ghent when I charged the last time in France and then I just got here so the last leg was about a hundred and what was that 119 miles from from there to this charger which is Maidstone in Kent. What is really good is this car now I can see does about 120 miles of highway driving. So I will do a, f a fuller report when I finally get back home, plug the car in and have a, I'll have had a, a, a bit more time to think about it there. So there we go. There we go, that's charging, isn't that nice? So let me go through the, the journey as a whole. We started at Amsterdam, charged, the car was fully charged when I got it uh, from Annie. Drove it, charged once, drove it, charged another time, drove it through the tunnel, charged once in England. So three rapid charging stops on the journey. And I know from experience that I would have stopped there anyway, because it's tiring, it's quite boring, and it, you need a break and you need to get out. So actually, that's the big difference with this car now. In the past, I would have had to stop probably seven or eight times. I don't think I could have done the journey. There aren't enough charges in Belgium. I think I couldn't have done it because it would do literally on a motorway, we we're talking 40, 45 miles. Now it does, without confidence, I can say, in heavy rain, in really strong winds in the Netherlands, 120 miles on a charge on motorways and probably I reckon next summer, when I'm just tootling around here, I reckon it'll do 150. So you're looking at charging a car once a week, maybe twice a week, a bit. You know, it's really different. When I got into London, I found a space on a street in London where you can park the car between 8.30 at night. Was it 8.30? 6.30 at night and 8.30 in the morning on a Saturday night. You don't have to pay. And it was right next to an Ubertricity charging lamppost. That was not in the plan. I was thinking in the following morning, I'll go and charge it a rapid charger. I didn't have to. Plugged it in overnight. It was fine. It filled it up. It cost six pounds and 12 pence to fill the car up. When I arrived in London, I had, I made a note of it, 49 miles remaining. So it wasn't completely empty. Uh, so then I drove back here, which is about, it's about 98 miles from where I was parked to where I, where I am now. So I drove from Amsterdam to London in an 11 year old Nissan Leaf and it was all good. So I just want to do an update uh, of life with the Leaf since I've been back. So I've now driven it about a thousand miles since I came back from Amsterdam. And I've got used to it now, and I've got a much better idea of what it really does on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, 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 I'm just getting the cable out. I think now, after driving it long enough, I think it's, it's range in normal driving, not on long distance motorways. Although I drove probably 35 miles on a motorway today at 70 miles an hour, but you know, normal A roads and B roads, uh, 140 miles, realistic range at this time of year when it's getting a bit chillier. So it's an incredible difference. I have never driven this car to Bristol from where I live without stopping and charging it on the way. And I didn't even think about charging it. And it's only because the chargers are here at work and while I'm editing here and doing stuff, it may as well be charging because I'm not using it. So I will not be waiting for this car to charge. I will get into it when I need to go home and it will have more range than it needs. That's it really. I just wanted to do that update because it's been really interesting to go through this whole process with this car you know has it been worth going to all the effort I went to to get this new battery the simple answer is yes it is for this specific car as I stated at the beginning 
Not all electric cars, in fact, very few of them. Anything made after about 2012, this will never be an issue. That car there, that car will have fallen to bits before the battery's worn out, the Mocha E. There's a Tesla Model 3 over there. That will be in pieces. It'll be recycled, but the battery will still be going. So this is very specific to this model, but it was still a very, uh, it's, it's really meant, meant that this car, I can be using this for another 10 to 15 years without another thought. That's it. As always, uh, please do have a look at uh, subscriptions and Patreon and YouTube membership and subscribing and telling your friends and family about the show. Uh, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that one, I think this video is going to be really relevant, very important. That is our latest video, just come out there. Up here, you can support us on Patreon if you like. Have a look, no commitment. And there, of course, you can subscribe, which costs you nothing.